Hello and thank you for visiting WorksheetsAndWalkthroughs.com. In this video walkthrough lesson, we're going to take a look at multiplying single digit numbers using arrays and discussing the commutative property. These are the standards featured in this video lesson. We'll be using these worksheets. You can go to WorksheetsAndWalkthroughs.com to print out a copy for yourself. You'll find them under our video walkthrough section and it's entitled Single digit multiplication, arrays in the commutative property. There are two sheets. Let's start with the first. Joey planted an apple orchard. He planted five rows of gala apple trees. There are four trees in each row. How many trees did Joey plant? So let's take a look through this sentence by sentence. We'll see if we can tease out our math clues and find our math job. So let's look at the first sentence. Joey planted an apple orchard. Is there any math information there? No, just story information. Let's move to the second sentence. He planted five rows of gala apple trees. Did you hear that? There are five rows, some important math information. Five rows of apple trees. Next sentence. There are four trees in each row. Ah, some more math clues. Four trees in each row. And here comes our math job. And often a math job will appear at the end of a word problem. Not always, but many times. It will appear right at the end of a math problem in the form of a question. And that's exactly what we have going on here. How many trees did Joey plant? That is our match up. We have to find that out. And if we think about our clues, we have five rows with four trees in each row, or five groups of four. And anytime we think of groups of, and usually we're thinking about multiplication, and that's what we're going to use to solve this problem. So let's get our multiplication sentence down. We have five groups or rows of Four. And we have to find out what that equals. We have to evaluate this multiplication sentence. And first of all, we're going we're gonna to look at making an array. So Joey had five rows, and there were four trees in each row. And you'll notice I'm using circles to represent these. I, this is the first row of five. And look, you can see there are four trees in that row. We're going to do five of these. And you, you want to use something simple when you're drawing math drawings. They're, they're just there to help you represent your ideas and to show some proof. In math, it's all about proving you know what you're talking about. So here's your proof. So there's, there we have four rows of four trees. And here comes the fifth row. And now you can see we have represented in picture form what Joey has done. He planted five rows with four trees in each row. You can see them. We have five rows, and there are four trees in each row. And you might be thinking, well, how many trees are there all together? And if you're thinking that, good for you. We can find this out. And I've noticed something right here and if you're good at counting by fives this would be a good method for you we've got five ten fifteen twenty trees ah so there must be twenty trees in all that joey planted so we have twenty trees now my question is this we have these two factors five and four we multiply them together and we get 20 trees. What if Joey planted four rows or groups of five? So there would be five trees in each row in this case. What if he did that? Would he have the same number of trees? Hmm. Let's check it out. And we'll use pictures as our proof once again. So that we'll use circles to represent the apple trees. So now let's set this up. We have four rows with five trees in each row. 
there's one row. There are two rows, or you can think of it as two groups of five. Three groups of five. And then we have four groups of five. I'm moving too quickly for you. Feel free to pause the video. We will all work at different speeds. So here we go. Okay, now we have four rows with five trees in each row. And we'll use our same method or, well, actually, we could try a different one. If you're good at, maybe you prefer counting by twos, we could, we could do that as well. So we'll do that. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. All right, so we have 20 trees. Well, let's switch to the same color ink. So we have 20 trees all together in this case as well. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? So when we change our factors around, first of all, we had 5 times 4, then we had 4 times 5, 4 times 5, and we got the same product. We got the same amount, 20 trees, either, either way. So that means that we could move around our factors. And this is called the commutative property of multiplication. And maybe a little clue that would help you remember that is the first part kind of looks like commute. And commute really means to move around. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're moving the factors around and it doesn't change the product at all. So now we can write our answer. Check to make sure we, we solved our math job. How many trees did Joey plant? Yep, we solved that. And we need to put that in a sentence. How many trees did Joey plant? And if you were thinking that Joey planted 20 trees altogether, you are absolutely correct. And that, that is a complete sentence. So now we have numbers, pictures, and words. And it makes a well-rounded answer. And look at that, a happy student. All right, let's try the second problem. Let's read through the problem to get the flow of the problem. Here we go. We have Mia was creating a floor for a room in her block crafting app. She used six limestone blocks in each row. There were four rows. How many blocks did she use to make the floor? Well, let's go through this sentence by sentence, kind of get the gist of, of this problem. and we'll, we'll look for our math clues along the way. Mia was creating a floor for a room in her block crafting app. Are there any clues there? Hmm, really just story information. Second sentence. She used six limestone blocks in each row. Did you catch that? Here we go. We have six limestone blocks. Okay, six limestone blocks in each row. Okay, six blocks in each row. Next sentence. There were four rows. You were probably thinking this was a math clue. If you were, good for you. Absolutely correct. There were four rows. So now we have six blocks in each row, and there were four rows. Hmm. You're probably thinking, ah, I know what to do. And if you are, good for you. Let's check it out. And here comes the last sentence. And look at that. It's in question form. How many blocks did she use to make the floor? If you're thinking that's your math job, you are right again. Good job. So now we'll, we'll take this apart and we'll think, okay, we've got equal groups going on here. We have four rows with six blocks in each row. Hmm. Or we have six blocks in, in each row and four rows. So you could think of this as Six times four equals, or you might be thinking of it as four groups of six. Ah, so we get another chance to see if we have the commutative property of multiplication going on. Let's check it out. Let's prove it. Okay, if that's true, these should be equal. 
All right, mathematicians, here we go. 6 times 4. All right, in this case, we were using blocks. Okay, let's check it out. All right, so 6 times 4. Okay, so we could look at it as 6 rows with 4 in each row. We could look at it that way. There's the second row. Third row. And you can see I'm just using simple squares again, like you want to use simple drawings when you're working on math problems. They're there to help you represent your ideas. And it's also proof that you know what you're doing. It's our proof. And there we go. We have six rows with four in each row, or six times four. Look at that, six times four. And maybe you liked looking at groups of three, or you're good at counting by threes. Let's check this out. You'll see that these are multiples of three. Let's check it out. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So if you were thinking 6 times 4 equals 24, good job. You'd be exactly right. So 6 times 4, we have 24. What were we dealing with in this case? Do you remember? How many blocks? Ah, there it is. How many blocks did she use? Well, she, she used 24 blocks. 24 blocks. Now let's prove that the commutative property of multiplication is happening here. And we'll solve 4 times 6. So in this case, we will go with 4 rows with 6 in each, or 4 groups of 6. There's the first row. And we have 6 blocks. Second row, another group of 6, another row with 6 blocks in it. Imagine this being the floor of a room. Maybe maybe it's a castle since it's a limestone floor. There's limestone blocks. There's our third row, our third group of six. And here comes our fourth. So we have four groups of six blocks. And we should have the same amount. And in this case, if, you, if you're, you're good at counting by twos or you prefer to count by twos or multiples of twos, we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Well, check that out. We proved it. So if you change these factors around, and in this case, we're, we have factors of 4 and 6, doesn't matter how you commute them around or move them around, you will still get the same product, 24 blocks. Our next step is to make sure that we have solved our math job. And let's check it out. How many blocks did she use to make the floor? We had six groups of four or four groups of six. No matter how you shake it, it all comes out with the same product. We've got two numbers greater than one, six, and the other one's four. When you multiply them together, we got a product that's bigger than either, either of those two factors. So we have 24, and, or it's four times six. It was also 24. So we can put this in words. And to solve that math job, how many blocks did she use? Well, Mia used, if you're thinking of making a sentence similar to this, or writing a similar, similar sentence to this, Mia used 24 blocks to make her floor. If you were thinking that, good for you. And once again, we used numbers, pictures, and words to make a well-rounded answer. And look at that again, a happy student. Well, that was a quick look at multiplying single-digit numbers.
using arrays and, and kind of proving the commutative property. Thanks for checking out worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com. We'll see you again next time.